Hello students, welcome you all uh, to the next session regarding discussion on uh, robots. In the previous sessions we have discussed regarding uh, the various machining operations carried out on uh, the lathe and uh, the milling machines especially to increase the production rate. Now uh, the new thing which we are studying here in this particular chapter is regarding the robots where already we know that in the day to day industries as when the human people are working on the machines, they are working in the hazardous environments. It may be in industries, it may be in the power plants everywhere. And apart from that, uh, they have to risk their lives. There is a repeatability of the work has to be carried out such as to achieve good quality type of products. And apart from that, uh, accuracy is uh, very much important such that the products can be developed and a uh, correct and well decided fashions. So to overcome all this one, now we are going to the world where we'll be discussing regarding robots. Already in your day-to-day -day life, you observed many of these robots. The very much simple example I would give you is, uh, you have seen uh, the JCBs, the cranes. They are all, these are all earth mover equipments itself, but they are nothing but, they are the examples of the robots itself. So previously we were saying if a man would require around six to eight hours to dig a pit of around seven to eight feet capacity depth. Now the same work it is carried out by an earth more within less of one or two hours. So you can see that in that fashion the robots are being used. Today in this particular chapter we'll be discussing regarding what are robots how are they working, the anatomy of robots, the different configurations where the robots can work effectively, their advantages, disadvantages, as well as application of robots. So we shall see one by one of all of them. So the very important thing is, what is a robot? So in very simple words, what you can say that it is a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator which is designed in such a fashion that it can move the material or parts. So you have seen the important use, uh, the main purpose of the designing of this robot was to easy the human efforts. So to lift the objects, heavy objects, which cannot be done by a single man, uh, sorry, which are done by around 10 to 12 people, they can be done by a single robot itself. So you can say that to the move the materials, parts, or even for doing any specialized operations with the devices where you can control the movement of its arms. So if you're controlling the movement of these robot arms, then uh, we call this as uh, a particular task for carrying out a lot of tasks we call it as robot. So in very very simple words what you can say that it is an a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator which is designed mainly to move the materials, parts or any specialized devices through some programmed motions. So programmed motions in the means you are defining uh, the arms of the robot to move in particular direction it may be the x y z axis where you can perform a variety of tasks this is a robot now the branch which is involved with the field of technology where it involves regarding uh, the designing construction programming the robots operation and application of robots everything uh, that field of technology we call it as robotics. So robotics is a branch of uh, technology or a field of technology where it is mainly involved with the design, construction, operation, programming and application of robots is known as robotics. This is in very, very simple words. So the main purpose of the using robots today is to see that the people who are working in the hazardous environment, they're risking their life. It may be in the industries, in the construction companies, or even in the power plants also. So in those places, you can use these robots and you can prevent those people from working in a hazardous environment, first important thing. Other important thing is 
they are working continuously so you can see here in this picture already this robot which is having its motions defined in some limits it can move from one end to other end with its arm movement and it can do various operations so you can see here as i was telling you these are the important things regarding some of the robots okay next Basic important thing is anatomy of the robot. So here in the anatomy of the robot, we will be discussing regarding for any robot, for any robot, if you want to design, what are its basic parts? What are its basic parts? So if you observe carefully in the figure, we need a base. We need a base. Then we need some links. So you can see here, this is link zero, link one, link to so we need the links then we need the joints and after joints whatever task you want to do that is if you want to do some painting welding or for lifting objects here you are using some of the connectors we call them as end effectors so i am just showing here if i want to grip an object i am showing the design of this gripper here so apart from that if i want an object for doing any welding purpose so i can use and welding also there is spot welding also so uh, the purpose of using this one is to see that uh, you can lift the objects here so we'll be discussing one of this one uh, each of these parts one by one starting with the base so base is the thing but it is uh, the support it is a support where all these parts are been uh, it acts as a foundation for all these parts so base, what you're observing here in this picture, it is nothing but a support for our foundation for the robot arms. It we call it as base. Next, after the base, the next important thing is the links which you're observing here. So this is link, blue colored part, water color, blue colored part link. So these links, they are defined, they are written by some names. You can see here, he has written the first one as a link zero, second one as a link one, and third one is link two. So uh, they are giving the names. So what is this link? So if you observe in this picture carefully, eh, this link, it is a thing, but it is a rigid member. The link is a rigid member. And this rigid member, what you're observing for the links, eh, its function is that it is connecting the joints. So if you observe carefully the link what you're observing here so this link zero it is connected to joint one and then again link one is connected to joint one as well as joint two so you can say that link is a rigid member which is connecting the joints and always the link it can be an input link or it can be an output link so if you observe here in this case if here it is acting as an input link then automatically on the other side it acts as an output link so link one, it may be the input link or it may be the output link also. And the moment of the input link always is responsible for controlling the various motions of an output link. So the input links motion decides regarding the motion of an output link. This is regarding the links. So you can see here in this picture, we are having three links, link zero, link one, link two. And all these links motions are related to one another regarding link zero link one link two so if you have an input motion from one link it, can, it is connected into the output motion for the other link itself this is regarding links then comes uh, the next term is joints so if you observe that each two links that is the link zero and link one their motion is transferred through this joints itself so in other parts what you can say that uh, the joint is the thing what it is a part which is responsible for integrating two or more links together. You can use two. So this is joint one and this is joint two. So you can use minimum, we have to use minimum two links or you can use more than two links also. So it is nothing but it is acting as an integrating for joining two or more links to provide such that it is responsible for providing relative moment. So it provides relative moment from one link to another link. So the moment it may be in the form of any sliding motion it can be done or it will be in the form of a rotation or any other motion also. So to transfer the moment from one link to another link, this joint plays a very important role. This is regarding joint. Then 
the next important term what you are hearing saying is it is known as end of the arm or we also call it as end effector so it is in this particular format so here at the end of this particular link if you are having a gripper like we call it as used for lifting the objects this one or we can use in the form of an probe for welding purpose or on whatever applications we are using we are placing that kind of particular effectors to perform the task so the end effectors are on the end of an arm tool it is a thing but this particular part as i was telling you here end of an arm part its main function is that at the at this end of the robotic arm whatever work you want to do it may be in the painting work it may be the spot welding work or it may be the pick and place the operation that type of uh, uh, effector is being placed which is responsible for doing this application apart from this another important thing is the degrees of freedom so as i was telling you that uh, the robotic arms which you are using here they are able to move along all the three dimensional axis which it means uh, it is uh, free to move in a uh, all the axis that is uh, it may be the y axis it may be the x axis or to me the z axis that is uh, this is the x axis this is the y axis and then is the z axis so each kind of robot it should be defined with the degrees of freedom so along which particular axis it has to slide it has to rotate or whatever be its function so the degrees of freedom have to be fixed for the movement of this robot in a three dimensional space these are some of the things and apart from that another one part which is not shown in the picture but just i will tell you that we are using a term known as manipulator it is a thing but it is an arm like mechanism which especially we are designing to move the materials or to move the parts also these are some of the things with respect to the robot anatomy then moving on to the next slide so as i was telling you when we are using uh, the robot links uh, there are different types of motions which are uh, responsible for uh, using those robot motions and we are performing our tasks so out of that we are is are describing here a first type of joint we call it as an linear joint or it is also known by a term known as l joint also so if you observe the picture carefully this is an input link yeah this is this is an input link and this is our output link so here he has shown the motion arrow mark in both directions which means uh, the, there is sliding motion or we call it as a translation motion occurring between these links so you can see here he has shown the dashed lines so this linear joint or the l joint is a thing but it is a joint where the links are under a translational sliding motion they are under translational sliding motion with one another in the linear direction translation sliding motion in the linear direction and this happens between the input and the output links so you can see here this is the input link that is the number one is the input link number two is the output link and uh, the axis of this links if you observe carefully how are these axis these axes they are parallel to one another they are parallel to one another the axis of these links so we call this l joint or linear joint another name we call it as a prismatic joint also another name for this one is prismatic joint because this is regarding the first type of joint next comes orthogonal joint or it is also known by another name known as o joint so if you observe in this picture which is shown here the orthogonal joint it is also a translational sliding motion between the input link and output link itself so here also if you observe it is also having a translational sliding motion between 
the input link number one this is the input link we name it as number one number two as the output link itself but the thing here if you observe that here the input between the input link and the output link the axis of the output links here in this particular fashion here the axis of the output link it is in which direction it is perpendicular to the input link so here in this particular case in the orthogonal joint here the axis of the input and the output links they are at 90 degrees to one another or perpendicular to one another that is the reason that we call it as an orthogonal joint so here also translational sliding motion occurs but the thing is it occurs at 90 degrees it occurs at 90 degrees so therefore you call it is by the name known as orthogonal joint or wall joint this is regarding the second type of joint next we have the rotational joint or r joint so if you observe in this picture according to this aramak if you observe there are two links which are joined by joint and if you observe carefully here the arrow mark direction what it represents it is saying that there is a rotary motion occurring there is a rotary motion occurring so which means this particular link that is here the relative motion where the axis of the rotation here it is perpendicular to the axis of the input link and the output link here that is uh, we call it as the rotational joint or it is the r joint then we have the next type of joint that is uh, twisting joint or t joint so if you observe carefully in this particular picture the twisting joint or t joint it is also allowing the rotary motion here if you observe carefully the axis this is also here between the input and the output in the axis of this rotation it is always parallel the axis of this rotation what you are observing here it is parallel to the input and the output links therefore we call it as a twisting joint or t joint so almost in all the robots we are using these type of joints itself for transforming the motion from one side to another side to perform the particular tasks these are some of the things then depending upon this we are classifying the robots let us see so depending upon the robot con configurations we are classifying them into five types the first one is Cartesian configuration second one comes the cylindrical configuration third one comes the polar configuration fourth one is a jointed arm configuration and the last one is a scara that is also known as selective compilance assembly robot arm so in the next video we will be discussing regarding all these configurations in detail